Hello, everybody. Welcome to Flashpoint. This is the program that's made in America for America. But we'll let you other countries watch. We're glad you're with us tonight. Uh, you know, here we go again, right from the top, share this program. There's going to be some truth shared tonight that you haven't heard before that you need to hear now. If you've got unsaved loved ones, get them to the TV, get them to your social media, text them, call them tonight. This is the night they need to watch your social media feed or however you're watching this show. And a special welcome to all of those watching via radio uh, on uh, iHeartRadio. We're so glad you're a part of us as well. All right. Tonight with me, Dutch Sheets, Mario Murillo, Eric Metaxas will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, but before we go anywhere, we got to start with, well, let me stick. Let me stop that over. Before I roll this video, I want to make sure you guys are a part of the Flashpoint email army. All right. So all you got to do to be a part, uh, giving you extra content, bonus content on there. We've got some ideas that we want to be able to give you. There's so much that we cannot get to in just an hour long program that we want to be able to give to you if you're a part of the Flashpoint Army email. So sign up and be a part. All right, well, you may have heard about this little thing happening up in Batavia, New York. If you haven't, watch this. <laughs> I love it. Mario, 
Wow, there's, I never get tired of seeing people get healed in a meeting. Now, before Mario talks, listen, if you don't know what that was, that is called divine healing. What's divine about it is the power of right. God, but the other side of that, Mario, you tell the people, you didn't know this person, you didn't know who they were right. or whatever. That comes through the unction of the Holy Spirit in a word of knowledge. And listen, folks, this is part of the great, I don't know why I'm pointing at you, but this is part of the great awakening. <laughs> Mario, give me a, what do you what did you think about the New York crusade? Well, Sunday it started pouring down rain. And anyone will tell you a tent evangelist, that's a nightmare. When I came closer to the tent, I drove several miles to get there. I got there two hours early and the tent was practically full and people were standing in the rain. We set up nineteen hundred chairs, they were gone. We had as many outside as we had inside. We estimate that the roads were backed up so far that three to 600 cars never made it to the 10 crusade on that Sunday. So we, we estimate well over 4,000 people tried to come and be a part of it. And the crowds never let up. We had thousands of people every night. It rained, it poured the first two nights, but the miracles were amazing. And God has healed so many people. But on the final night, I was shocked when uh, I stopped counting at 500 that came forward. And what it shatters is the myth that revival is coming. Revival's here. This is a blue state. This is not a Bible Belt city. This is the state of New York. God sent me from California to New York. And not only did we match the results of, of California, we exceeded them. We watched. They tell me that over a thousand souls were saved in four nights. You know, only God knows the real number, and it could be a lot more than that. But I truly believe that the way the atmosphere changed, the way the people came, the way Flashpoint Army prayed and gave toward this, it all ended up in this overwhelming Niagara of glory that transcended anything we've ever seen before. And it's only the beginning. The fires are breaking out across America, folks. Uh, I'm telling you, revival is here. It's not coming. It's here. And we're going to see even more than we saw in Batavia, New York. The overwhelming power of this. There's so many details I'm leaving out. But everyone that was there, one of the best things was I went on our Facebook page. We had thousands of comments. Normally, those are from people who haven't been to our meetings. These were primarily people that had been at Batavia and said, we have never seen anything like this before. It was shocking, the results. I know that all the glory goes to Christ. There's no one else that can receive glory for what is happening now. It was amazing, it was astounding, and words escaped me to watch that every night we had to begin an hour and 15 minutes before the announced time because the tent was already full. Even on a work night, we had to begin the meeting at 5.30 because the crowds had swollen so great and they were in the tent ready to be saved. Yeah, I, it, and listen, you know, the, the first, some of the first pictures you sent me were that afternoon, uh, afternoon here in Texas uh, of people already in the tent so early in the middle of rain. Um, and li I know you mentioned that earlier. That is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's a move of God in itself to get people like yeah. that. Dutch, let me bring you in here. Uh, you know that there's an excitement uh, about this move of God that's happening. It's not that God hasn't moved before. Ladies and gentlemen, this is different. This is something new. Dutch, tell me what you think. Well, you know, I, I, it's time. I agree 100% with Mario. That revival is not coming. It's here. And he made a statement. He talked about the atmosphere of the place. When, when, when it's time for a revival, uh, an awakening, an outpouring, God has 
finally been able to work in people, in regions, to where he can rend the heavens. The atmosphere begins to change. And when that happens, it's it's the lifting of the veil. The lifting of the veil, the revelation, the ability to see clearly, that doesn't just happen for believers. We're not the only ones that get revelation. Sinners have the veil lifted, and regionally that veil begins to lift. And what you find is people that wouldn't hear the gospel or want anything to do with it yesterday will hear it today. People that weren't drawn yesterday are drawn to it today. Day because the atmosphere changes over a region. The heavens have been rent. This is where we are. So many dreams have been sent to me lately. In the dream, God says, it's time. That's all he says over and over. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. And so what he's waiting for us to do now is just what Mario is doing, to believe that and begin to act like it. And I'm saying to young evangelists, old evangelists, I'm saying start start getting your faith out there, preach the gospel, do whatever he tells you to do, but stop waiting. It's here, it's time. Amen, it is time. Uh, Mario, uh, let me show this picture. This was my favorite picture when you sent me. Look at those car lights. <laughs> what I love about that isn't that there's a traffic jam. I can't see the end of it. And you can tell that's not New York City. <laughs> you got to want to go to Batavia, New York. It's not on the way to anywhere, if I remember right. It, it's, a, it's a destination you've got to want to get to. Mario, when you see this, now you've done tent meetings for years. You've done evangelistic yeah. crusades for years. What makes yes. what's happening right now so different? It reminds me of the Jesus movement wow. when we were watching the fish jump into the boat. But there's something unique and different about this time. Sinners groaning in their seats. And you know, that wonderful healing you just saw, uh, we are still working on the footage of so many others. There were remarkable healings of growths disappearing. People able to walk. God touching every conceivable illness. But here's the difference. There is a fierceness to this one. It's almost as if, America is so fed up with its government, fed up with all of the uh, perversion that they're watching, sick of what's being told to their kids at school, that now they were looking for an answer. It was like something had to give. It, it's like a, a fault line that uh, the pressure built up so great that suddenly there was an earthquake. And I watched it from the stage. These people at times would get lost in worship to the point and shouting when I was preaching that I had to stop. And it wasn't just Christians that were doing this. It were people overwhelmed by the fire of God. And, and what Dutch said, I want to build on that. Any young preacher, any pastor that will throw away your notes and get rid of your tradition right now, and begin to preach a fiery gospel and promise that the power of God will be present. It's going to overwhelm the churches that rely so much on entertainment. The people are hungry. We're talking about New York. The glory that I have seen is in the two bluest states of America. Think wow. of that, folks. Yeah. California wow. and New York. Wow. And that means that everything in between is going to ignite in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, and you know what? As you were talking there, Mario, I couldn't help but think about people of faith. I'm talking to the mature believers now, people that have been in the, been in the faith and they understand for decades, it's time to put a demand on the faith that you've been taught. Did we see souls saved? We can, I, I said it today to someone, most of us think of a revival. We're waiting to go into church Sunday morning and expect to see Pensacola outpouring all of a sudden. It's not going to happen that way, ladies and gentlemen. There are going to be outpourings of that type. I'm not saying that will never happen, but stop looking for it to come the last way it came. It never happens that way. Uh, you know, Dutch, when we see God move like this, what should those believers that are watching, what should they do with their unsaved loved ones and family members? Well, I think if they can get them to these meetings, but I'll say, you know, this that that they're going to they're going to be they're going to be coming to Christ everywhere. You know, I, I was in South Africa once when revival broke out there, and a man started having meetings downtown for business people over the lunch hour, 
And of all things, he, he told me today, I'm going to speak on tithing. God's told me to, to tell these people they need to be given to God what's his. But he said, you watch and see people, people will get saved because there's such an anointing of revival in this city. It doesn't matter what we preach. As long as it's truth, they get saved. He did that. And when he gave the altar call, dozens of people from that city started streaming to the altar. I'm telling you, the heavens were rent. The atmosphere was right. And they started coming to Christ. I would say to people, you know, get them to these meetings if you can. Uh, but above, above, above everything, just, just believe that God's going to do it wherever he needs to do it because he's going to send miracles to the streets. He's going to send it to send them to the offices, the marketplace. He's going to send signs and wonders into homes. God's just going to start doing this everywhere. Anywhere people will reach out in faith and begin to respond to him in faith and share the gospel and pray for the sick, pray for individuals, God's going to start doing this. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. We didn't plan this. Uh, We're going to put the phone number up. And uh, I want you, uh, we're going to, we've got a lot of ground to cover here in the program, but we're going to put the prayer line Later in the program, I'm going to have Mario pray for you. I'm going to have have him pray for those family members of yours that you've been believing God for for a long time. And I believe this time to get your faith out there, but it's time to step into what God's doing. So uh, you see the prayer line right there, 877-281-6297. We'll put it up, then we'll have to take it down because we always overwhelm the phone center. Uh, But keep calling. And uh, when, when you call, tell people who you're believing God for in your family and in your in your life. And you can also, if you call and you can't get through, there's a callback feature. What does that mean? You push a button, it'll call you back when there's an empty line. It's a great feature. Make sure you take advantage of that. All right. So we're going to leave it up there for just a minute. All right. So let's move along. As evidenced by our discussion tonight, we know that people are being drawn to God in a more powerful way than ever before. You just heard about 3,000 plus showing up for a tent revival in New York in the rain. You know the awakening is real. I know it's real. And it's happening, just like Mario said. God's moving and he's stirring hearts in America. So what role do the policies of the radical left play in this awakening that we're seeing right now? The various mandates that are being imposed across the business sector. Take aviation, for example. In the news this week, headlines have swirled about the way many delayed and canceled flights by Southwest Airlines. We've heard conflicting reports. While the official line from the company and the Pilots Association is that it's not related to any organized walkouts, any organized walkouts, I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. We can't help but wonder if there's more to the story, especially when we see pictures like this one that show up on social media. See the flag hanging out there? Ladies and gentlemen, it is something (laughs) to celebrate. We are seeing pilots, we're seeing airlines come to the point, we're seeing businesses, uh, Dutch and Mario, that are finally saying, you know, enough is enough. We're not going to put up with this. No. We're not going to put up with this. Look at this next tweet. I want, I want you to see this. Uh, tweet number uh, four, Ted Cruz says, <clears throat> this isn't possible. The corporate media told me this doesn't exist. Yet you just saw it right there, Southwest employees. Uh, I want to play this video, uh, this next one, guys. Uh, uh, about the, uh, this is uh, our friend Tucker Carlson talking to an airline employee about the power that the pilots have. Watch this. We'll be right back. Describe, if you would, since you work in the business, what the effect on our national transportation infrastructure is about to be because of these mandates. Well, as we know, the transportation sector is the heart and soul of this country, and it's a very delicate system. If there's a disruption in one part of the system, it has a catastrophic effect um, among the rest of the system, which is going to affect uh, commerce, it's going to affect trade, and ultimately it's going to affect the economy. If you have flights reduced by 30%, because 30% of pilots are fired, this is going to affect how your goods get here from overseas, how they're distributed to the stores. You know, the same thing's happening with the truckers, it's happening in the shipping industry. Um, Those Amazon boxes that typically show up in two days, you might be looking at three weeks. So, I mean, it it turns out that people with essential skills like airline mechanics, air traffic controllers, and yes, commercial airline pilots have more power maybe than they realized. You got to wonder if people are being pushed to the point where they're going to be fired, how many more of these sick outs, 
job actions, whatever strikes, whatever you're going to call what we saw this weekend, how many more of these do you think we're likely to see? Well, uh, first of all, we have all the control, and the control comes from a simple word, and that's no. We just yeah. don't need to comply. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I will never promote a sick out or a work action. That is illegal. Uh, with U.S. Freedom Flyers, the organization that I'm with, uh, we will never promote such a thing. With that being said, we also cannot control the actions of individuals. And I think that, I think that you will see massive disruptions in supply chain um, and in your travel if we just stand up and say no. If these companies fire us and they fire 30 percent of the workforce, aircraft are going to stop moving. And it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your air travel and it's going to affect the economy. Joe Biden will say this is your fault. Finally, how do you respond to that? He'll blame you for this. It's his fault. It's squarely his fault. I think anyone with a with a critical mind uh, can point towards the federal government and the companies that are enforcing these illegal mandates from the federal government and, and, and see that it's the federal government's fault. Absolutely. Joshua Yoder, thank you for that. I, I love his directness. It's your fault, uh, Joe Biden, if this is what happens. Uh, but if, I've got to be encouraged uh, in what's happening. In fact, here in Texas, with all that's happening with Southwest, a Texas-based company, and what could happen with American Airlines, Texas Governor Abbott <coughs> issued an executive order yesterday effectively banning companies in the state of Texas. Well, that's marvelous. All right. Uh, Dutch, when you hear this about the planes and you hear this about the pilots union and Southwest, what, whatever this thing shakes out to be, it's, it's encouraging to me to see people and Americans start to stand up for their rights. Right. Yes. And I've been, I've been expecting it. You know, you can push uh, most Americans, you can push them only so far and then they're going to rise up. And I heard a great, great quote from Emerald Robinson. She's a Newsmax reporter. She said, you cannot comply your way out of tyranny. You must learn to disobey. And that's exactly right. As long as we will comply, they will do this. They, they, they are emboldened. They, they have made the very clear that they want to control everything we do. And they want to silence those on the right completely. And the only way we stop this is to rise up and say no to it and say, we're just not going to do it. We're not going to do it any longer. And yay for Texas. Abbott, uh, uh, good for him. These states are going to have to start rising up and saying, we're just not going to do it. You can't make us. We're not going to do it. That's what has to be done. That's right. And, and I will say this, uh, because I've been on both sides of the Abbott train here. Uh, I feel like he could have done something a whole lot sooner when it came to the wall, when it came to our border. And he was a little late to the party here. Uh, but this is a good thing. Mario, what's your thoughts? My thoughts are that uh, beyond the airline pilots, we have 400,000 pastors in the United States. And the overwhelming majority of them are still not resisting tyranny. In fact, when I was in Batavia, even though thousands and thousands of people were showing up, there was a local Bible college and many of the large churches said, I'm not going to support Mario's meeting because he's too political. Now, I wrote an article today. It's going to be explosive, but it's going to deal with what I believe is the next linchpin in revival. It's called Five Disasters You Are Facing If You Are Keeping Politics Out of Your Pulpit. Not only do I take a stand that pastors need to oppose tyranny, there is a disaster looming for them if they don't. And we're, we're going to post that on mariomarillo.org. But what I want to talk about is this. Not only do the people need to stand up, the congregations need to stand up and ask themselves, why am I supporting a church that in the face of evident tyranny refuses to join the fight of freedom? And people say, well, Mara, that's po politics. Not anymore, my friend. This is now evil. What Biden has done is evil. What he wants to do with our checking accounts is evil. What he's asking us to accept and allowing our children to be set up by, to be the victim of sexual predators by the curriculum that we're pushing and to set up children who are innocent to feel that they are racial oppressors without ever having done anything wrong. The school is the place where the miracle will have to start. I believe it. But the local pastor 
faces an ominous thing if mama goes down to the board meeting at the school board meeting and she's looking around and saying, where's my pastor who ought to be backing me up when I'm awake at night worrying about my child and wondering why if he's a man of truth, he's not opposing this tyranny. And I know I'm going to get flack for this, but I'm going to tell you the miracles in Batavia came because the truth was being preached. And that's what Dutch is talking about. We are going to be controlled in every area of our life and it's time that we all stood up against it yeah amen and you know i i'm one thing that's interesting to me mario in these meetings that you've had is that you've had pastors that did stand up and they rallied around you and said we need a move of god in our state or in our region and that's what happened but the madness from the left and their mandate of the week marching orders for some time here we've been talking about their desire to indoctrinate our children with their radical agendas, just like what Mario was saying. This week brought a few more items to note. First, Gavin Newsom, yeah, that one, signed a law Saturday that forces major department stores to display, get this, gender neutral section for all childcare items and toys. I have so many things I want to say. But now we also find out that DC Comics has made their latest incarnation of Superman. Guess what? He's gay. Come on, guys. Superman's not gay. I absolutely love what Al Parada said about this this morning over at stream.org. The news is not shocking. It's not edgy anymore. It's boring. It's obvious. It's predictable. Soon Wonder Woman will be transgender and women's group will say nothing about it. You want to be edgy, DC Comics? Make Wonder Woman vocally pro-life. See what happens then. Meanwhile, can anyone name one American icon the woke haven't wrecked or targeted for destruction? Just one. We've got to stand up. We've got to stand up. I know we, I feel like it, we're a broken record, gentlemen. We talk about this every time we're on, but standing up. But you're right, Mario. So many are still not standing up. I was at a, where I live, Terry and I were at a city council meeting last night. It was shocking. I was appalled right here in Texas at the corruption going on in my own city. And I won't go any further lest they're watching. But you know who you are. Uh, we've got to make some changes in churches. Your pastor, you should be there in those meetings. You should be there in those school. I'm po- Why am I pointing so much tonight? You should be there in those school board meetings. This is what we've got to do. We've got to stand up. Mario, please help me out here. Okay. One of the things is the hypocrisy of the left. Uh, you know, John Gruden just lost his job with the Raiders. And I don't defend anything that he said in his emails that was either anti-woman or, or deflammatory against any group. But here the NFL has rappers at every Super Bowl that have said things about women, pro-violence, and against gays that are infinitely worse than anything that John Gruden has said. So the double standard is this. When we tell you you are wrong, you are wrong. But when we do what you do, it is not wrong. And that's what's making it so difficult for people to wake up to this moment. The press. I told you last time that stand-up uh, comedians from the late-night talk shows have in the White House the most fertile punchline that we've ever had. If you ever want to make a skit or quote a man that is is going to a level of buffoonery and hilariousness in his stupid remarks, it is Joe Biden. But not one stand-up comedian can do it because of cancel culture. You see, Americans see this, and they're getting sick of it. They see it in front of them, and they know that it is all a contrived, messed-up takeover. And they are not going to have it. But the leadership in the body of Christ needs to wake up right now. Because as I said, there are five things that are going to happen to you without anyone doing it. Right. And, and it will end in disaster. Comment, Dutch, before we take a break. Yeah, I just want to say that there, there's, a, there's a heresy, as far as I'm concerned, that Satan has succeeded in planting in the church that has made so many pastors pacifists. 
And we are not called to be pacifists. We're, we're called to make a stand. We are told to hate evil, abhor evil, Romans says. The word means detest it. We are to make a stand. And, and, and it is possible to hate evil and not love and not hate sinners, not hate unbelievers. It's very, there is no contradiction there. Jesus hated evil, but he loved the world enough to die for them. And so we, we are told to make a stand. We're even told to pronounce judgments. Uh, Paul, Paul did it. Peter did it. Jesus did it. We're to say, hey, this has to stop. We bind this. Or, or sometimes they looked at the individual and said, you're going to be blind for a season. Paul said in um, uh, one of his pas passages in 2 Timothy 4, Alex the coppersmith did me much harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. He did not hesitate to say, hey, God's going to deal with this. We have to rise up and be strong enough to say we love every person out there. But we're not. But we, that doesn't mean we tolerate what they do. And Mario's right. It's evil. It is evil. All right. Before we take the break, Dutch, would you? We've we've kind of bashed the pastors here a little bit. Uh, would you pray for them? Let's take a moment and pray for the pastors across America, and not just America. Our friends in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. This thing worldwide has taken on a horrible life of its own. Please pray. Yes, well, Lord, what you've shown me very clearly is that you are sending a fresh baptism of fire to the pulpits of America. You are coming to those who are struggling, who are fearful, who are lukewarm, who, who, have, who have been beat up and hope deferred has, has uh, plagued them and they've been rejected. And Lord, and some of them are just flat out compromised. But there is a company of, of leaders out there in the body of Christ that will respond. And you are going to light the fire in them once again. And we pray for them now. We say, Lord, Lord, send the fire. Let it rise up in them with great intensity. Let it bring zeal. Let it bring passion. Lord, we just we just ask you to baptize them afresh in the Holy Spirit. If when they wake up in the morning, let let that cause them to be thinking about this. When they go to bed, cause them to be thinking about it. Lord, don't let them get away from it. Give us another black robed regiment in the church of America where leaders stand up make a, and and decide we are going to fight this and we pray for them and we bless them and we love them and we ask you for this in Jesus name amen and folks pray for your pastor let him know you're supporting him yes let him know that's amen. very important we have to do that all right so is atheism dead we'll find out after the break don't go away and welcome back to the second half of flashpoint Listen, if I haven't told you before, you make sure you share this video, this program, all your social media sites, get it out there. Remember, we're also on Rumble. Uh, you want to see any of our past programs, you can go there or go to the website to pick up uh, anything you may have missed. All right. Well, with me now, Eric Metaxas, number one, New York Times bestselling author, Martin Luther, one of my favorites, Bonhoeffer and Amazing Grace, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. He's got a new book. Is Atheism Dead? Welcome so much to the program, Eric. Glad you're here. I'm thrilled to be here. As you know, I'm a fan of the program. Uh, you have the greatest guests apart from me. I can't put myself in that company. But I want to say that uh, we love what you do. My wife and I uh, really Thank enjoy you. it. And I'm thrilled to be here to talk about what ends up being big news. The, the book, uh, Is Atheism Dead? Um, I never dreamt that I would live long enough to see science pointing to God. People who are confirmed atheists are, are gonna have a problem because the science of our day, 50 years ago, you could make an argument. Today, uh, it's open and shut. Science is pointing to God. Biblical archeology span is overwhelmingly pointing to God. And the information is so stunning that you kind of have to read it carefully to make sure you're not missing something because you I almost couldn't believe it. I did the research and I'm I'm just excited to get this good news uh, out to a, a hungry church. Yeah, we, we're glad you're getting that out as well. Listen, I, I have a preview copy of some of the chapters. This book releases October 19th. Is that correct? It October. is. But we want people to pre-order it because, as you know, when you're putting out a book that is this uh, much against the secular narrative. Right. It's very yeah. hard to get it on bestseller lists. Uh, people are out for you. They're particularly out for me now since I've been pro-Trump. And I just want to say to people, uh, please pre-order it. If you go to my website, just my name, ericmetaxas.com, 
You can get it at 45 percent off right now if you pre-order uh, and you can sign up for my newsletter like you were on Rumble. We've been canceled from YouTube. I take that as a badge of honor. We're living in crazy times. Yeah. But the Lord said when it comes to the flood, he will raise up a standard against it. He's raised his battle flag Amen. and he's using uh, a Amen. lot of people and doing it. Just it's an exciting time to be alive. Yeah. Amen. And listen. Flashpoint Army, you know what you need to do? Go to that website, ericmetaxas.com, pre-order the book. You don't want to miss this one, Is Atheism Dead? I know you're going to enjoy, Eric. I enjoy your writing style and what you do there, Eric, so I'm looking forward to this. Let me hit some of these highlights here in the contents, because uh, there's one thing that I remember, and I love it that you bring it out, Chapter 2, where science cannot go, the Big Bang and other singularities. Wrap that up. What is that about? It's almost funny because if you talk to any scientist on planet Earth, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in the Big Bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? A few decades ago, you know, when we were little kids, there was still huge arguments about it because scientists were disturbed by the idea that the universe has a beginning, that history has a beginning. They wanted to believe that it's always been here. It always will be here. And there's no God who created it because what do you need? a God to create something that's always been here. Well, science through the course of the 20th century more and more and more pointed to the fact that no, it wasn't always here. Something insane happened, something that's not supposed to make sense. In fact, it makes no scientific sense that the entire universe, not just space, but time itself, were created 13.8 billion years ago out of nothing. Now, if you believe in the Lord of Scripture, you say, well, that's no big deal, that's what God does. But if you don't believe in that, you look at that and you say, this can't be right, and you'll do anything you can to make it go away. Even Einstein, I tell the story of Einstein, in 1911, he came up with some equations that pointed to this idea that the universe is expanding, therefore it comes from a specific point. And even Einstein thought, this is bad. My colleagues are going to laugh at me. It seems like religion, the universe is created. So it, it, it's comical because now – Nobody really talks about it. But when you start looking at the story of how strong people fought against the idea that the universe was created, well, the reason they fought against it is who else says the universe was created? Oh, yeah, the scripture. Uh, and everyone who's believed in the scripture, including Isaac Newton, centuries ago, knew the universe is not eternal. If you believe the scripture, you already knew that. But science came around and finally pointed to that. I mean, that's one of the easy ones. But it, there's a lot of funny stuff in that story, in my opinion. It's just funny to see how people are so hidebound by what they're told they're supposed to believe that they're afraid to look at the evidence. But there's other evidence uh, that I put uh, in the beginning of the book. The first book, part of the book is science. Then there's biblical archaeology, some funny, crazy stories. And then there's just stuff about atheism itself, which I think in some ways is the most strong of my writing because the new atheists – uh, have been in, very intellectually dishonest, and somebody needs to call them out on it and to say, hey, you guys, you might be great scientists or whatever, but when it comes to this stuff, you stink. You, you, yeah. you, you're not going to get away with this much longer. But the science stuff, uh, I met a gay, guy named James Tour in Houston, probably the top nanoscientist on planet Earth, profound believer. He starts telling me about, hey, here's something else science has come upon that nobody wants to bring up because it's so embarrassing. If you ask a scientist, did, did uh, Earth, did life appear on Earth four billion years ago, like in single cell form? Like that's what happened, right? Every scientist, absolutely. If you ask them, okay, how did that happen? They have less than no idea. And, and again, I'm, I'm not going into the details, but it becomes funny because for 70 years, it was a big experiment in 1952 in Chicago where they said, we think we've got it. And in 70 years since then, not only have they not moved the ball forward as they were so sure they were going to, the ball has moved backward. Today, because of advanced science, we know that we don't have the beginning of a clue of how you get a living cell from non-living matter. And and since nobody talks about this, Gene, I said, you know what? Somebody needs to call them out and say, hey, hey, remember this question that you right. stopped talking about? Uh, we need to talk about this because this is some of the most devastating uh, evidence uh, yes. that there is no yes. chance of life without 
a creator who is God. Well, it's very intriguing, uh, Eric. I, I want to. What is it you hope to accomplish when people get this book? What do you want? Is it you want them to walk away with? Well, a couple things. First of all, I think a lot of times we believers buy into a secular narrative and we're kind of shy about our faith. Like we might be bold in some ways, but when it comes to science or the, the intellectual world, we kind of act like, well, I don't care about that. Well, folks, we better care about it because God created it and he is using it in these last days to point to himself. There are things that when you realize that your faith is not only rational, but it is atheism that is irrational. When you begin believing that stuff and seeing that that's a fact, it changes your walk. You, you don't walk around saying, well, I just got something spiritual I want to share with you. All truth is one. The Lord created the world of science. The Lord created history. And some of that is catching up. And I, and I think believers need to be emboldened, especially in these dark times, that, that the God we worship, he's the God of every part of the universe, every scientific discipline, uh, every moment in history, the more you know, the more it emboldens you because we need to be really bold in our faith. But I also think there are a lot of people that are not believers or maybe they aren't sure what they believe. believe. I want them to know, hey, the evidence is in. 50 years ago, you could have said, I think I'm an atheist. In this day and age, if you dare to read this book, you're not going to be able to say you're an atheist. Maybe you're an agnostic. Maybe you'll say, well, I've still got questions. But it's about time somebody put this evidence in a book. For some reason, believers have maybe we put it in really technical books that your average reader doesn't read uh, or we believers don't read it because we think, well, that's too scientific. I said, I want to put this all in a book that most people can read. They can understand what it's saying and they can rejoice with me in seeing that the Lord in these last days has allowed us to see evidence for himself that is so astonishing. We're just going to walk through life differently. I really believe he's preserved it for this time. And here it is. And that goes with uh, biblical archaeology as well. There are things that have come out in the last few years. You think, wow, this is amazing. What else is out there? Because it's, it, it is getting, it's getting crazy, but it's good crazy. It is good crazy. All right. So make sure you get the book. Is Atheism Dead? You don't want to miss that one uh, coming out here. Go on, online right there to the website on your screen. EricMetaxas.com and pre-order the book. All right, Eric, let's kind of shift to a little bit in the last few minutes what's going on in our world right now. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, is that what you think? You know, um, if somebody raped and killed somebody I love, I'm not the kind of guy that says, you know what, hey, we all make mistakes, let it go. Right. Once Good. that person is in jail, I might go and pray with that person, but I will not sleep until that person is found and put behind bars, if it is even possible, I believe it was stolen, but let's say it wasn't. I want to know, I want to be convinced, and I want every American to be convinced are absolutely transparent. And when people tell you to shut up, move along, that is a big red flag. They're hiding something. And we all know that the foot dragging that's gone on in Arizona and in other places, that is just absolutely circumstantial evidence somebody's hiding something they don't want us to know what happened if we don't fight all the way to the end to make sure that we know and what went wrong and who cheated uh, who are the traitors who are the benedict arnold's by the way whoever did this whoever's behind this they make benedict arnold look like george washington this is a a satanic uh usurpation of, of we the people, we the people are the government. And God created this uh, glorious thing we have called self-government and liberty for somebody to come in and to very cynically do what they did or even try to do what they did. If we do not stand against it with all our might and main and pray and hold the line, uh, we are to blame. God is looking at his church. Don't worry about what people think, worry about what God thinks, stand. Uh, and see what the Lord your God will do for you this day. God is going to do great things. I have no question about it, but we must stand. The church must wake up. Yeah, amen. And church definitely must wake up. It's what we say here every week. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what's going on in the White House. I hear you're, uh, you may know some stuff happening between the Kamala Harris and the Joe Biden group in the White House. What's, what's up with that? Well, I've heard about this in the uh, in the natural world and in the supernatural world. Uh, I've heard people who, who know a little bit behind the scenes who know 
that uh, there are some rifts there, that it's not a happy situation. But there's a prophet uh, in Las Vegas, I don't know if you've had him on, Mike Thompson, one of the most seasoned, uh, mature men of God I have ever heard, and very humble, as must go with that office. And he and others, but him in particular, uh, spoke about what the Lord showed him. And again, it's Mike Thompson in Las Vegas. But because he's so seasoned, when he, when he speaks like this, you know, you don't say, well, what does he really mean? Or I, you don't need a follow-up question. It's super clear. And, and he made it clear um, in his dream or in this vision the Lord showed him what I have heard in the natural, that there is uh, strife going on, uh, that the Kamala Harris folks are not seeing eye to eye with the Biden folks. And we all know this is not going to end well. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but we uh, we really need to pray because I think that they're probably whistleblowers, uh, even in the White House, maybe in Kamala Harris's team, who will be willing to volunteer something about what's going on on the Biden side. We know that it's totally unconstitutional for the American people not to be sure who is governing them. That's unacceptable. The idea that we go, oh, well, that's the way it is. That that can't be the way it is. This ceases to be America if we shrug at that. So uh, something's going on. I'm just going to keep praying and believing the Lord. Uh, he has his hand on this nation. And uh, if we, the people, will stand, if we will do what the German church did not do in the 30s, That's if right. we will wake up in time and act and be brave, the Lord wants us to be courageous. It's not a extra credit Christianity. He wants us to have courage and to fear him. If we do that, um, I have uh, great hopes for the future. Yeah, I do too, and I believe that. In fact, that's a good book. In fact, Eric wrote Bonhoeffer, I suggest every believer out there go read that book so that history does not repeat itself. Well, Eric, thank you. We're out of time. Make sure, folks, you're watching Eric. He's a nationally syndicated radio show, over 300 outlets. And listen, you don't want to miss any of that. Eric, thank you for dropping by. We're looking forward to your book release. Just go pre-order it, ericmetaxas.com. Thanks, Eric. God bless you, Gene. Thank you. So many great things there, guys. Uh, let me, uh, I'll go around the, the horn here. Uh, Dutch, do you believe this is, you know, when you hear things about atheism being dead, like Eric was sharing there, but also uh, what's happening with Mara and these tent meetings, you know, it takes me back to Cane Ridge, uh, which was the earmark or the, the poster yeah. meeting, camp meeting of the Second Great Awakening. Are we into a Third Great Awakening? Yes, we are. We're in the early stages of it. I was just at Red River Meeting House this past weekend, Friday, just to pray because I just wanted to saturate myself in what happened there and the anointing that's there. And that led, that was in the late 1700s, that led then to Cane Ridge in around 1801, 02. And Cane Ridge birthed the Second Great Awakening. Cane Ridge was so powerful that people came from hundreds of miles. They didn't have internet or, or you know, any way to communicate, just word of mouth. They came, they walked, they rode horses, they brought families in covered wagons. Thousands of people came. There would be sometimes five, six, eight, ten people preaching all at once because they didn't have PA system. So somebody over here on a hill would be standing on a tree in a tree preaching. Somebody over here would be on a stump. Somebody in the back of a wagon over here and groups of people clustered. And they said at times, Holy Spirit would be moving in such a profound way that bodies literally littered the hillsides around Cane Ridge with people laying on the ground, shaking under the power of God. Out, Thousands saved, healed, delivered, and again, it birthed the Second Great Awakening, which saved America. That's exactly what's about to happen. God is going to give us this Third Great Awakening. Amen. He has said He's going to do it. He is going to do it. It's already started. We're in it. It's here, and it's going to save this nation and our destiny of being a trumpet for the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Get ready. It's coming. Nothing's going to stop it. Amen. Uh, you know, if you were calling... Uh, just keep, yeah, hopefully you did the callback feature. We're going to, Mario's going to pray here in just a moment. But Mario, what he talks about there with Cane Ridge and the Red River House and that whole season of the Second Great Awakening, it, it sure, I agree with it. it. We are in the Third Great Awakening. Are you in agreement with that or do you think we're not there yet? We're there. And the reason that you need to cite Cane Ridge is because you, that was the bad land. That was the lawless area of America. 
There was no a real law and order anywhere in that state. And it flipped to become a Christian state. And that's why it's such a vital moment. There's deep darkness on the people, but the Lord will rise upon you. History is going to say this is the moment for a great awakening when immorality is celebrating, brandishing itself, parading itself. What was once done in the back alley now is done front and center. That's the time when the glory comes out of nowhere and people are changed. And by the way, pastors are my friend. 1,100 of them stood with me in New York. There's just a handful that I believe God's going to bring into the fray, and they're going to be gloriously used of God if they'll repent. But right now, I believe that that awakening has begun because we as a nation, our soul is vexed. Our hearts are nauseated by all that we've seen, and we yearn for God's glory and purity and repentance, the spirit of repentance, has returned to the nation. Amen. It has returned. Mm. All right. So I said we were going mm. at the end of the program. Mara is going to pray. Uh, I, uh, we're going to do that in just a moment. Uh, if you are haven't been able to get through on the phone lines, I know there's something like close to 100 calls still in queue trying to get through. Go ahead. Keep calling. We'll get through to you. Uh, use the callback feature. Will somebody come back? But we're going to pray about that. And Mario, we're going to pray and we're going to stand for, I, I'm going to let the Lord lead you, but let me tell people that I'm getting a lot of questions. Where's Pastor Hank? Where's Hank? Did Hank, or is there, you know, <laughs> are we mad at Hank? No, no, no. Hank is on vacation. Pastor Hank, we let him have a vacation. Can you believe that? We let him have the week <laughs> off. Uh, our friend Lance is on his way South America somewhere. That's why they're not here. Uh, all is well. Don't uh, don't panic. And then I was corrected by my friend Joe somewhere in the Northeast that it's not Superman who said he is gay. It's the son of Superman. So there you go. We've cleared that up. Uh, so he's the new Superman. Anyway, it's just silliness. Um, but this is where we're at as a nation. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. If you want, this is the time uh, before Mario prays, share if you haven't shared this link, share it right now. Because listen, I'm telling you, from the moment we went on the air tonight, I knew that this we were about some divine business going to happen. And listen, tonight is your night. Uh, Mario, please, I'll hand it over to you. I just want to thank God for the men that have on with me tonight. And Dutch is, he's not a substitute. This is a great man of God. And right. he's done an amazing job tonight. It's always an honor to be with you. And now, Lord... You have asked us to pray, and I pray. You, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. God, we've got to be stronger than everything that's going on. We've got to believe that the end times are not happening to us. We are happening to the end times. And Lord, our, our loved ones are going to come into the kingdom. Children, parents, relatives, those that we have wondered if they'd ever be right. They're coming in, and we will look and be radiant when they're born in the arms. We thank you, God, for healing the sick across this network so that the glory of Christ will be revealed. But most of all, we pray that everyone watching, no one has come to Flashpoint tonight by accident. They are here, and they need to be saved. And Lord, I pray that you will convict them and show them that Christ is the answer. We've heard it from so many directions tonight, how atheism doesn't work, how woke culture doesn't work, but Jesus never fails. He will help you raise your child. He will give you power over all your emotions. He will provide you with the eternal peace that when you die, you will be in heaven. But he requires that you surrender and you sacrifice your own will to the glory of God and you will be saved. And Lord, I thank you that you're doing that in Jesus name. And my final remark is you see that phone number. That's that's a lifeline. And I, I want to thank God that you where you are right now are going to take time to call and say, pray with me. I need God. I need Christ to save me. We want to hear from you. Nothing will make us happier or give us more joy 
then when you dial that number and you say, I need Christ right now, please pray with me in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mario. And yes, call that number. Um, 877-281-6297. Uh, we'll, uh, as we got in the last two minutes, I'll give you a chance, uh, Dutch, to wrap up your thoughts for the night. Go ahead. I just want to encourage leaders to, to, to begin to respond in faith to what, what we're saying, what, which is what Holy Spirit is saying. I remember in 1968, I watched a man who was, he loved God, he pastored, uh, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but he knew nothing about gifts of the Spirit, signs and wonders. One Sunday night, I watched him. He'd never done it before. He walked to the podium, and all of a sudden, it was like he stepped into some strange place. You could tell he was caught by surprise, and he started calling out words of knowledge and said, this happened to you at such and such a time in your life. God's healing you now, just like Mario was. He did that for an hour and a half. I asked him later, how did you do it? He said, I have no idea. I just started knowing things. I tell you, God's about to do that. He's going to release Amen. gifts, power, anointing. I tell pastors, go for it. Amen. Go for it is right. All right. So don't miss Thursday. I guess we'll be... Uh, Lauren Bobert, Wendy Rogers, and of course, David Harris Jr. It's going to be a great program. We have not, we're still talking about Afghanistan, all the hot topics, but this is the answer. The third great awakening, you're in it. It is the answer to our problems. Thank you for watching right. Victory Channel. Keep watching. Get involved in the programs. Get involved in what Kenneth Copeland started here when he started the Victory Channel, because it's here to build your faith. So glad you guys are with us. <clears throat> Regards to Eric McTaxis, of course, our friend Mario Morello Dutch Sheets. Thank you guys for being on with us tonight. You don't want to miss a minute of what's going on here on Flashpoint. Go to the website, check out the resources page. There you want to make sure you stay in tune with what's happening because this is where the real news is and we're made in America. We'll see you next time.